feel like I'm on an unboxing video. Yeah. The only thing that's going to taste like short for this one. The little one can taste right here. Stickers. Oh, what's up? Okay. So these are uh, GTX 2 front control arms for a 240Z that they have modified the ball joint pitch an angle for me. So they should work better with S14 knuckles, which is what I have on my car. I haven't flipped around, but I'll explain that in a minute. But let's actually cut these boys open. So what is going on today? Just go talk about these. Okay. Install these arms. And then we can, uh, I'll do another alignment. Dang, these tension control. Johnny's are actually gold oh, this time. Let's see. You flex and got the gold yeah, to match yeah. the calibers. <laughs> It's like the, actually it looks like the same shade. Yeah. It's a little darker. This has been sitting around the shop a little while. So one actual really cool thing about Texas Toy Tuning. Well, fun fact, I actually bought my first parts from them in 2010, oh no, 2011. I've been a fan of them for a while now. <laughs> but now being sponsored by them, it's like so cool. Because obviously I really believe in their products, but uh, yeah, so the angle of that ball joint is way different. I could actually get the other arms I have that I bought from them a while ago. This, I think this angle is pitched like maybe like 10 or 15 more degrees that way. Let's keep opening. They also gave me these ball joint ends, which said these are for, these are S14 ball joint ends which I might need to use. I did make the S30 ones work on my ball joints last time. Mm -hmm. And I might need to do it because, well, you'll, I'll explain with the spacers and stuff like that. But um, depending on the height of your control arms, you need to, well, you should space them out so you're not losing travel. Um, so why don't right. we uh, transfer over to the 240? Yeah, let's get over there. You over here fanboying. <laughs> Time to modify it. All right, so these are the GTX-2 lower control arms from Technotoy Tuning. Um, it's a lower control arm and a tension control rod, arm, whatever you want to call it. And this basically is your only control arm on a McPherson-style uh, suspension. So it comes with the lower control arm, the tension control rod, and a Sway bar end link, and then it has like a couple little washers zip tied to the end here, just to space it out in the subframe. Oh, okay. So two will go on one side and two will go on the other side. But like we were saying, all of these ends have like roller balls in them. So none of these joints actually have any poly in them, except for this link right here. So all of these, this will be a very stiff and very, uh, what the word for it is. Robust? Well, yeah, yeah. It's, look, you can look at these arms and know but that's a huge, huge rod. <laughs> so, it's probably overkill, but that's what you want with your suspension. You don't want it flying off of you. Yeah, that is very but, true. Um, but yeah, so, this will, having all of these bearings in here instead of poly bushings will definitely make everything, you'll have better road feel and it'll be a little uh, more like precise with your turning okay. and stuff like that. Well, I was gonna say that's what I was about to ask too. Like, what's the benefit, I guess, of having this versus like a poly bushing, like normal production cars maybe have? Yeah, so normal production cars will have like very soft bushings, which okay. make it like you'll have a nice ride. Like, it'll have a good ride feel. Like, going over bumps won't feel all crazy. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, like that kind of comes with a downside of also being a little sloppy while you're driving. It gives you, like, I guess, the more boat feel when yeah, you have you'll a Yeah, you feel like you're floating or yeah. you feel like a boat. Okay. Um, so then you can get to this style, like like a stiffer style poly, mm -hmm. like energy suspensions, all those people that sell these. 
um, these style bushings. So then you get to this style, which is a little stiffer. Then you can get all the way to these boys, which are also on top of being stiffer and more precise, they're not gonna wear out as fast as these. Like yeah. I will probably need to never change these out the life I have this group. Okay. But these bushings will eventually go bad. And it kind of, it's funny, the softer the bushing, the faster it seems to go bad. But um, yeah, so this is essentially what you're gonna get if you get any GTX2 control arm. They sell them for a bunch of different vehicles and they look pretty much the same. Um, but this, this end right here is for an S14 and it's got a slight different pitch. So you, if you had both of the sets of these that I have next to each other, you probably wouldn't notice unless you actually were like side by side comparing them, and trying to figure out the distance. I mean, the angle of that ball joint cup. So there's an S14 end that they put onto an S30 arm. And then they also extended another 25 millimeters for me because I was telling Kevin there that uh, I need a little bit more track. I didn't even know about the angle of the ball joint. He's the one that mentioned it to me, so. Okay, I guess he was watching one of the videos or something? Well, I was telling him about having uh, S14 knuckles and just the arms that I have in general, and he was saying that the ball joint pitch angle is a little bit different on S14s oh, okay. versus S30s. So they added that angle into this one since I'm running those. Uh, yeah, that's pretty knuckles. dope. Yeah. So th they obviously know their stuff. They also gave me a set of the, I guess it's like technically what like a, the ball joint taper like part would be called. Um, Cause the joint is actually in there, but we're gonna call it that. So this is actually the, uh, the taper part for an S14 mm -hmm. arm versus the, uh, like the ball joint on a S30. So I'm gonna play with these and see which one, uh, which one works out better. The S14 one is made for the S14 knuckles, but the cool thing about the S30 ones is they have, if you take it apart, it's actually a bolt on both ends. It's not on both ends. Let's see if that'll stay in there. So they have these two little caps, or little spacers, right? And you can orient these well, actually, let me show you these because these are actually a little bit very similar. If I can slide it out. Yeah, I'll get the bottle out. So these actually press into the bearing, right? Mm -hmm. These are slightly different than the spacers. So do not get these confused if you're putting them on. These are the only ones that actually have the, the diameter shaft to sit in here. So it kind of is self-explanatory. But essentially what you can do is you can change the roll center of your ball joint by stacking these differently. Damn, it's like super customizable. Yeah, so so say, I'll show you when I actually have the, the arm up there, but you want your control arm to be as level as possible. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you lower your car, you're bringing the, if you have a McPherson style suspension, you're bringing the control arm up because you're shortening the height of your strut, which is what most core livers do. So you're shortening the height of your strut, so you're bringing your control arm up, and actually as your suspension compresses, the pivot of that arm matters a lot because it actually, it'll ramp up camber as it goes in. So you're actually getting more camber the more your suspension's compressing. So if your suspension is basically, your lower control arm is sitting up and your roll center's all jacked up, you're actually riding around with your suspension thinking it's like, acting like it's compressed. So you're gonna have mm. more camber than you already have. And that's what so I guess. it'll ramp even faster once you have. So some cars you add the spacer in between to counteract that? Yeah, so Technical Tuning actually sells roll center adjusters for like the S30 knuckles and stuff like that, but they also have more adjustment even in these arms, which is awesome. Yeah, that's cool as hell. Yeah. Cause I know with my car, that's what I did. I did spacers for the S2000. Yeah, yep. And so having one of these on the top and one on the bottom, that is essentially a stock roll center for an S30. But you can add that one to the top and then throw this bad boy back down here. And, um, and that is basically adding 25 or 23 millimeters to of like roll center adjustment to that knuckle. So it's basically making this, making the ball joint sit a little higher which is lowering the arm. So once you actually, so once you 
raise your suspension 25 millimeters, well, sorry, shorten your suspension 25 mil millimeters, <laughs> you can add it in at the bottom, 23, with these exact little guys. And if you need more, you can always get their, uh, their actual roll center adjuster. I think they sell them in 25 mil, I'm not positive. I'll check their website. So guess what? We'll so, link it below. So today's task, you're gonna be? So, yeah, so today, yeah, the whole point of today, other than just talking about arms, is to actually install them. <laughs> uh, so the actual point of today is installing these bad boys. That's what we're gonna do. If y'all didn't know already. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna take these mounts off of the uh, TC rods and then mount these pieces first because it's a lot easier to uh, it's a lot easier to get all this together when, if this is already bolted to the car. And these actually have a little lip on them. You can see that guy right there. Yeah. There's a lip on both sides. And they powder coat all this stuff so it's not going to be rusting on you. Everything else on your Z car is going to be rusted, but not your. <laughs> um, so these just press right into these little pockets. Okay, so the little edge, the the lip on there goes in, facing in. If that'll stay, I should put it through. Okay, and then the other one faces back towards it. Crush washer, bolt. And I will fully tighten that. Torque the spec. <laughs> <laughs> Why I have this car at this height, I don't know. So you wanna make sure your arms are as even as they can be. Or you wanna make sure that like one side's not clocked out, the other side's um, not clocked out either. So put these all the way in, this is the shortest adjustment this can get to, and it has flat spots on the actual bar in the center. So you can adjust this on the car. These two just tighten up against the center bar, and that keeps it in place, so. Um, more of the uh, bearing spacers. All right, let's see if I can sandwich all this together with my hand. All right. And I'm actually, I have the bolt going straight up because you can't obviously put it in from the top. I'm gonna clock this around. Cool. Um, so the bolt is facing down. So in case something happens, these are all nylon lock nuts. So they shouldn't come undone, but even if it does, the bolt will stay in there because of uh, gravity. You smart. Okay, so I'm leaving everything hand tight for now just because uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to get it all set up and then tighten it. Um, and I have the tension control rod on the farthest point because I already know, since I had a set of these arms on there before, I had them all the way clocked out, so I'm having this in the farthest in position. Um, so now I gotta throw the bolt through the subframe. This is the stock bolt. To how gross and not pretty it is compared to all this other stuff. <laughs> um, throw the two washers in. It's probably one of the trickier parts of the whole thing, but still not bad. I'm also gonna clock my uh, tie rods in a little bit. Make it easier. These are also techno toy tuning tie rods. You see three out. I know. I hope you guys can tell that I'm hype about this stuff because uh, I've just had it for so long. And they're just a cool company because they they don't work on like the most like the biggest money maker cars or like the most popular tuner cars. They work on like the stuff that they like, which shows that like they're doing this because they like it not because like it's gonna make them a ton of money. Yeah. Which is cool, because it always shows through to their product, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, they're putting that cool techno toy tuning engraved thing on those arms because they think it looks badass, and it <laughs> does. But like, 
If it was a bunch of dudes in like a chair room, they'd be like, make S13 arms because they're the most popular arms and we can make them cheaper in China and we're not gonna put all those engraving because that costs too much money and uh, we're done. No, that's bad. They're literally the opposite of that. I didn't really need to take my tie rods off, so. Did extra work? Yeah. <laughs> Just realized, but now, eh, I'll leave them off right now. Might make it easier to get the arm in. Um, so I'm actually gonna start with the S14 ball joint end. Um, and just see where that lands me. If for some reason the control arm, it looks like the control arm is going to be pretty much parallel. So if your control arm is sitting up, if I can get my knuckle out of the way, if your control arm is sitting up like this, that's a little exaggerated, but you know, some people, camber gang. Um, <laughs> if your control arm is sitting up like this, you're gonna have one restricted movement, but you also get something that's called bump steer, which your car's like auto steering itself and it feels crazy to try and drive over anything that's not perfectly smooth. Um, and what we were talking about earlier with uh, adding like the roll center spacers, mm -hmm. um, which the S14 uh, ball joint ends don't have, um, will actually lower, lower where your arm actually bolts into it. So it'll make the top mounting point of the ball joint a little taller. So if you raise your suspension really high, you can lower this back down. It'll keep your suspension at the same height because the knuckle's in the same spot, but your control arm will then be at the, the correct position. Looks pretty damn parallel to me. So these are GK Tech knuckles, um, and they are very annoying actually. Uh, they're nice knuckles and they, uh, they do exactly what I need, but if you look inside here, this channel, you, you have to like fish a socket down there and then fish a little extension and get a... Oh, dang. It's really annoying. Oh, uh, yeah. But the nice thing about these is uh, the pitch of the ball joint, where it actually bolts into the knuckle on a stock S14 is actually slightly offset. And on these, it's actually direct center. So since it's slightly offset, if I was running the knuckles in the correct way it wouldn't be an issue but since i'm running the front left knuckle and the front right because i'm basically swapping because the tie rod pickup points on s14s are supposed to be behind the lower control arm and they actually have their tension uh tension rods running forward so it's actually flip-flopped from s30 suspension so if i was doing that then the ball joint would actually be offset to the wrong side a little bit but these knuckles are actually designed I think for drifting. So I think they actually might be a slightly quicker turning radius, which is also okay because S30 racks are a little slow, but that'll actually correct that because it's uh, straight in line with the uh, strut. So that shouldn't be an issue at all, which I didn't think about until I had already gone the S14 route. So then <laughs> I got these knuckles. <laughs> I'm gonna guess also, they're not cheap. Cool. Uh, I don't remember how much they were, but probably not. All those people that ask me all the time, how much was how much does the build cost? I don't know. He deletes <laughs> that out the memory. <laughs> it's, it's not like, it's not the reason I do this. I'm yeah. not like trying to sell it and make a bunch of money. So I, Dude, we call your brain with prices yeah. RAM because it's <laughs> random access memory like in a computer. <laughs> and actually, the tie rods have a very similar setup where you can stack these boys and make sure that your tie rod is running parallel as well. Damn. So. Oh. It's like this was made for oh, I, gotta throw this guy down here. I ran my own little spacers in here. Can't get any awesome. easier than this. Yeah. Some people might look at that and be like, what? What is that? Why is that taper thing going in there and it's not fully flush with anything? This is just like a ball joint end. This is what your ball joint looks like. Your ball joint just has a boot on it. But since this is a roller bearing like this, you do not need to, uh, you don't need to have a boot on it. But uh, yeah, so if you're installing your arms and this taper section is still showing and it's not fully seated on this bit, that's completely normal. That's how it should be. Don't freak out. Okay, so the final two things we need to do would be connect the sway bar link to the control arm and extend it, which I'm going to need to extend the arm first because you can see that the, the uh, actual link will 
match up to one of these holes depending on how long you make the arm. So you're going to make the arm the correct length for however wide you want to make your track. Um, so this can go from, the normal ones can go from stock, uh, stock S30 arm length to about 30 millimeters more. It's safe to adjust this 30 millimeters. Okay. Um, and just like the, uh, these gold arms right here, the two outer nuts on here are just to lock, well actually they're locking out the, um, the joint end and the actual arm. So if you loosen these guys, this center right here is where you're gonna do all your adjusting. The thinner piece. So as you adjust it, you'll see the arm actually gets longer. If I can get these adjusted. So I have the track kind of where I want it, um, but I will leave it loose for final adjustments on the actual alignment machine. So the last thing we're gonna do is get the sway bar end links on. That's what it's called. It's looking like. Oh. Dropped your nut. <laughs> That's not a hammer. There we go. Little. Probably. Hammer. And uh, yeah, that's installed. That was really easy. So that is how you install some GTX2 uh, lower control arms on a S30. If you have any questions or anything like that that I have not answered, you can try asking me and I'll try answering. But otherwise you can just email Technotoy Tuning. Just wanna give a big shout out to them for taking a chance and sponsoring us. So if we send you, let them know. That'd be cool. Yeah. But, I mean, and I don't get anything, but. The coolest thing about this too is if he's putting it on his car, nine times out of 10, he really trusts the company. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I got their tie rods. I have their uh, I'm using their top hats, uh, their welding mounts. I have their whole rear end kit that converts your rear end to an R200 from an S14 or S13. Damn, as well. I forgot about that. Yeah, you need deep got, in the game. I got <laughs> almost everything that they sell. I'm looking at maybe getting their rear, they have a micro rear brake kit. Nah, we'll see. But, um, and we also have a whole 280Z streetcar that we're building <laughs> over there in the other room. So I'll need to buy all that same stuff over again. So. Could you technically reuse your other stuff on the? Oh, tray? these arms that were on here, I'm putting on that car for sure, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, so big shout out to Techno Toy Tuning. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for making these specifically for my car. And I mean, obviously they know their stuff, so it's a huge help. And uh, thank you to everybody that bought shirts from us. Hell yeah, dude! Super awesome. What? Thank you guys for all the orders. Um, we already shipped out the first like thing of them. We're just gonna ship out like at least once a week, mm -hmm. um, just because. The post office closes before, we film this stuff at 6 p.m. and on, so the post office closes at five around here, so we can only get there a couple days a week, so. Yeah. We'll ship out every day, but you know, we'll get them out as soon as we can. But thank you for buying the S30 shirt, and then X has got the, let me. Rocking that. Stylish. Amazing. Classy. <laughs> yeah, so, thank you guys. Uh, the next video is going to be on uh, the actual dyno tuning on this. This thing is going to be on a dyno machine. At so. P-tuning. At P-tuning. Can't wait.